Oh. Well, welcome everyone and uh, to our very first webinar and huge thank you and welcome to Helen Burns for actually hosting this for us. I'm really looking forward to it because I know I desperately need your tips. <laughs> and just to let you all know as well, we have a uh, our second webinar is actually going to kick off next Tuesday at two o'clock. And that's actually going to be presented by Tomás Hayes from Kerry Leo. And Tomás is actually going to cover all aspects of the available funding through Leo, but also through other government organisations. And I know a lot of you have contacted me regarding questions as to what's available and certain restrictions and some of the existing funding has changed. So Tomás is going to run through all of those. But listen, you'll get an email out about that and you can send your questions in in advance as well that Tomás can run through. But in the meantime, I'm going to hand over to Helen now. And Helen, I'll let you kick off and I, I'm going to disappear, but I'll be here in the background. Bye. Thank, thank you very much, Elin. Um, you're all very welcome this afternoon to our webinar on working from home with more ease. So I'm not sure which uh, picture here represents you working at home. Um, mine is probably more akin to the top right uh, because there's a, a, a few kids in the background that have been warned within an inch of their lives now that they're to play either in the sitting room or in the back garden, not in the front garden and not in the hallway to keep the noise level down. Um, so I'd probably be more akin to the top right. If uh, the picture that represents you is more akin to Homer Simpson in bed, then I'm afraid you're on the wrong webinar. It's uh, to get working rather than the more ease that, that, that you need. But uh, hopefully we don't have too many who, um, who go into that, that category. So I'm going to kick off with our webinar just to let you know what we're going to cover this afternoon. Um, we're going to be about 45 minutes. I'll leave about 10 minutes for Q&A at the end. Um, we're going to start with looking at how can we stay positive um, the next thing we're going to look at is setting realistic expectations of ourselves while working from home. And the next one we're going to look at is planning so that you maximize the output and your productivity while at home. Uh, communication is the fourth element that we'll cover. Um, and then, as I said, we'll have a few minutes for questions and answers at the end. So if you haven't done so already, please go and grab a pen and paper so that you can take down your top learnings and actions from this session. Um, and hopefully you'd leave with a few concrete ideas of how you can work from home with more ease within the next half an hour. So before we get started, I just want to run a quick poll to get a sense of who's, who's on the webinar. So some of you may have been working from home be before all of this happened, and some it may be due to the restrictions or, or, or children being at home or whatever over the last couple of months. So we're just going to launch a poll there now. And, and I want you to click, there's two options. You either click that you're new to working from home or you're experienced at working from home. So um, some of you will have a lot of experience on webinars and you'll be able to do this quite easily. Um, I can see the poll up here for me now. Um, so if you can just click whether you are new or experienced and hit submit at the bottom, then that poll result will be, will be logged and Elin will share the poll results with us then. Okay, so if everybody has done that poll, um, Elin, can you close the poll and share the results? And we'll get an idea. Um, okay, th th 30, wow, we've 64% that are experienced working from home. That, that'll be brilliant for the Q&A section um, at the end. So that, that's great to see. Um, that's super. Thanks for that, Elaine. We can we can close that poll. So um, so look, you're all very 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 welcome here. It's great to have so much experience on the call because we'll be able to share share ideas at the end of what people are doing. But what I do want to just highlight is that even for those who have worked from home before, and um, this is still a very new situation that we're in now. And, and the, the natural breaks in our work, the natural rhythm of our day, the connection and communication we had with other people, even while working from home, has all changed very significantly. Some of you may have been working from home while kids were at school and now the kids are home. Um, some of you may be working from home, but now you're also trying to, to take care of parents who are maybe cocooning or neighbours or whatever it is. So even for those who are experienced, I would hope that you'll pick up a few, a few tips on the webinar here this afternoon. 
Okay, so the first one we're going to look at is, is being positive. So a, a few things that I jotted down here is, look, we need to be really, really careful of our, of our mindsets. Um, it's important for us to remember that the most successful people in life, if we look at the likes of, of Tony Robbins or um, Barack Obama or um, uh, Oprah Winfrey or whoever it is, but these people who have been highly successful, top of their fields for decades, they invest an hour to two hours every morning in getting their headspace right in making sure that they're the best version of themselves when they enter into their day and do what they're already expert at. And yet many of us think we can just wake up and throw ourselves into the day without having any preparation beforehand or taking care of ourselves or, or our mindset before we engage in our normal activities. So look, it really is important. And I understand obviously people's circumstances at home are, are, are very different um, in relation to maybe small kids or whatever. So I'm, I'm not saying this is easy, but I am saying whatever you can do, do. Um, it's really important that we work on our mindset and that we have things in place that, that support us going in to, to be really strong when we're engaging in what we're doing. So in order to have the correct mental prep, prep, it's different for different people, but I'm going to give you a few examples of morning rituals that, that some people do, and, and some of them will appeal to you, some won't, that's fine. Um, I'll give you an exercise at the end to, to come up with some of your own, but I just want to give you some examples um, of the mental prep. So for some people, it's, it's mantras or it's yoga, meditation or prayer that they might do first thing in the morning. Um, it could be breathing exercises. Um, it could be um, journaling. So that would be really just um, doing a, a brain dump really of writing whatever comes to mind down, they say at least an A4 page. It doesn't have to be legible. It doesn't have to make any sense, but just whatever comes to your mind to get it out on paper first thing in the morning. You may never again use it or, or you might use it. That, that, that's not the point. The point is that you clear your head. Um, I just have a slight interruption here for a minute. Excuse me, please. I'm on a webinar. That's okay. I'll be up in a minute. That's okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. The joys of working from home when your eight-year-old brings you part of the bathroom that, that fell off. Um, okay, so, so so back to where I was. Um, okay, so with the with the mental prep, um, it's really important that we do whatever we can. And as I was saying, the journaling is a way of clearing our head. Whatever has come into our head from when we were asleep at night, it's a way of clearing it in the morning. And it may be positive or negative, but it frees us up to engage more productively with the rest of our day. And that, that, that's the point of the journaling. Um, another thing is I am statements. So that would be 21 statements about yourself, talking about yourself in the positive present tense. So for example, if you felt, and it would always be aspirational. So for example, if you felt that you were maybe always late, you might say, um, I, am, I am very punctual. I'm always two minutes early for my appointments. I always have all the documentation and preparation work done that I need for all my engagements. Um, so that would be one of your I am statements. And, and you would repeat that in, in the morning a number of times for 10 to 20 minutes. You would have 21 of them, uh, 21 different ones. Um, and then you would do it again in the evening before you go to bed at night. They say what we say to ourselves about ourselves when we are by ourselves determines our level of success, i.e. our level uh, success and happiness to me are interchangeable words. They mean the, the, the same thing. Success is not success if there isn't happiness um, there with it. Um, so if we're saying negative things, if we start off our day berating ourselves, um, then, then that's, not, that's not good mental prep for heading into the day. So we need to say positive things about ourselves, talk about ourselves positively to ourselves, so we're setting positive seeds there. Um, okay, so the other thing um, um, to remember in relation to this is that sometimes no news is good news, or at least less news is good news. It would be very easy at the moment for all of us to spend a lot of time um, you know, stuck on social media or, or, or e even, even if it's really good information that we're doing on the official news and the official websites and continuously consuming information about COVID or the economy or whatever it is. Um, if it's negative, that's actually not serving you at all. And just do a check in with yourself and see how do I feel after engaging with this content? How is my outlook? How positive am I feeling? How motivated am I feeling? And if you're not feeling better afterwards, which I can guarantee you, if it's, if it's the news, the vast majority of the time, you're not going to feel better afterwards. Um, then you really need to listen to what your body is saying to you and, and reduce or stop engaging with whatever that content is that's having that impact on you. 
So what I would recommend to people is whether it's three or four times a week, whether it's once a day, but for the vast majority of us, there is absolutely no need for us to be updated with what's going on in, in relation to, to news and COVID and the economy and all of that. There's no need for most of us to be doing that more than once a day. Um, so for, for, for your own um, good mental prep, um, that's what I would recommend there. Um, another very good tip that I got from Moira Geary a number of years ago, there's a little app called Chime and you can download this, it's a, it's a free app and you can set it to go off at particular intervals. So what I'm going to recommend to you is that this might be one of the things that, that you do, is that you set it to go off every hour and at the end of every hour I want you to stop and think what are you grateful for that has happened in that hour? What has gone well? Was it that the sun came out for 20 minutes when we were scheduled to have lots of rain? Was it that um, you got a, a project completed that you didn't think you would, or you got a sales call or a query that you were surprised you got given that your doors are closed or whatever it is, but something will have happened. Could be you had a nice cup of tea, you know? It, it doesn't have to be something massive, but it really is important that we touch base with what we're grateful for on a very regular basis given the current climate that we're in right now. Um, okay, so I suppose just to kind of sum, sum those up, what I would recommend is that you write down a list of 11 go-tos. So ideally you would have a ritual in the morning, first thing in the morning, that you have that helps you get into the right frame of mind. Um, you would have a ritual in the evening and before you go to sleep at night that puts you into a positive frame of mind before you go to sleep. But then during the day that you have maybe about 11 go-tos that if you feel you're dipping, if you feel you're, you're not operating at your best or that your, your attitude or outlook is actually coming against you instead of working for you, then have 11 things written down that, that you're not trying to think on the spot. You've them already written down and say, okay, which of these will I do now? Ideally, they'll only take a few minutes, okay? So it might be to, to listen to a favorite song. You might have two or three songs written down you might choose to listen to one of them. It might be that you're going to go for a two minute walk or a five minute walk in the garden, just get in from fresh air, get your body moving, get blood circulating a little bit. It might be that you have that cup of tea or that cup of coffee. It could be that you have a buddy who's always positive and upbeat and you give them a quick call. Um, whatever it is, but have a few things written down that you can use to, to, to shift yourself out of a slump if you, if you enter into a slump at some stage. Um, the other thing to do is to um, is to realize that look it's okay to not be okay sometimes we put huge pressure on ourselves so I know the, the heading of this section is be positive but sometimes we put huge pressure on ourselves to be positive the whole time this is unprecedented times that we're in it is absolutely totally natural and normal you'd want to be either a psychopath or a totally enlightened being to not crack or crumble or have a breakdown or feel negative at some stage during, at multiple stages during this crisis so look don't worry about it happening so that there's a lovely little saying about depression it says um, it's okay to be depressed just don't unpack your suitcase and live there and I would say that about you know about not being okay it's okay to not be okay it's important that when we have negative emotions and feelings that we allow ourselves to express those and that we realize that it is perfectly healthy and normal to do that. So whether it's to break down and cry, or whether it's to have a blowout with a partner or whatever, but you'll often feel that after that happens, you feel the air has been cleared and you're actually in a better place afterwards. So, you know, it's, it, it's okay to not be, to not be okay, um, but do have your little things that you can help to get you out of it if you feel you're staying there a little bit too long. Okay. So the next thing I want to look at is, is having re, um, realistic expectations of yourself, of your team, of your suppliers, of whoever it is that you're engaging with while you're working at home, including your families, okay? So, um, so as, as my 80-year-old came in there and interrupted me there a few minutes ago, you know, I need to have realistic expectations. That's going to happen every now and then while you're working from home. Um, so, um, so always think it's people first. OK, we, we need to stay human now more than ever. We need to be respectful of ourselves and respectful of others and to show compassion. Um, everybody's situation is, is different and, and absolutely some people have it way, way, way tougher than others. There's absolutely no doubt about that. But everybody is going through huge upheaval. So there isn't anybody who isn't struggling at, to some extent um, with the circumstances now. So please remember that when we're engaging with, with others. 
Um, the environment and the context within which that you're working from home is, is very different. And the time that you can um, realistically expect of yourself to work will be very different. So for example, with myself, I used to work in the office and I did pretty much nine to five, Monday to Friday, roughly speaking. Um, when the kids were off school, I would do a two, a two day week, which equated to about three months off in the year or something like that. Um, and that, that worked well with where I was at with, with, with family. Um, and it was it was a good balance for us. But now I, I would normally be be doing nine to five now at this at this time of year. Um, but that's totally unrealistic for me now. I have four kids at home, homeschooling and uh, trying to keep them occupied. And when they're not uh, killing each other, they're getting on great. But I have to make sure they don't kill each other as well. Um, so I have to be a lot more realistic about the amount of time that I can invest in my work. Now, that's just for practical reasons. But there's also more logistical reasons, I suppose. When, and I'm just using myself as, as, as an example, but a lot of you will be able to relate to this. When I was working before, I had clients come into me in my office, um, or we had Zoom calls or telephone calls, or I went and presented in, in hotels around the country, um, or I went to see clients around the country. So the very way, and, and I also went to lunch and normally met friends or, or maybe past clients or people that I knew and in my net network basically for lunch. Um, so my, my working day had a lot of change built into it. And so sometimes I was sitting, sometimes I was standing, I was walking to and from the car or in and out of town. Um, and and th th there was a lot of movement and change. There's a lovely Irish saying, a stool is so small or dibra, a change is as good as a, as a rest. And my natural working day had that built into it. But for a lot of us now, we're sitting down in, on, on, on a chair, for, I'm, I'm standing at the moment, but most of the day I'm, I'm sitting down when I'm doing my coaching calls and I'm sitting in front of a screen and, um, and, and then in the evening I could be sitting down watching Netflix with the, with the kids and no matter how comfortable the couch is, our, our, our bodies um, need to be moving and so it's really, really important that we build in little breaks, that comes up on another slide as well, but that we build in little breaks to what we're doing and during the day and that we don't expect that we'd be able to sit in front of a screen um, or, or you know from nine o'clock in the morning until five o'clock in the evening that is just totally unrealistic in the current circumstances so d what different people can do will be different because all of our circumstances are, are unique in the way that we're working from home but again i would say listen to your body see what's working for you and some days you might be able to do more, some days you might be able to do less, but it's the building in, the breaks and the changing, the, the standing, the sitting. Um, we have, I think, um, Mairead on the call who might give us a few tips later on about the ergonomics of working for, from home. But uh, that kind of comes on under a little bit of looking at your space. Is your space that you're working from at home, is it conducive to, um, to being able to work well? So to have it, you know, tidy or at least clear space around you and that, that, you're, that you're not feeling cluttered or crammed into a corner. Again, if possible, we all have to work with, with whatever circumstances we have ourselves, but look to see how you can make the most of whatever your, your circumstances are. Um, remember to set smart goals. Now I'll talk about plan planning on the next slide, but just very, very briefly on, on the goals in, in relation to setting realistic expectations. Goals need to be smart, they, they, they need to be specific, they need to be measurable, achievable, realistic and time framed. So you might think that it's achievable to make 60 calls, um, but is it really realistic? Um, and, and really it's exp experience, you have to test and measure see what's working, what's not working. If you're setting goals, if you're continuously not reaching your goals, then you're continuously setting goals that are too high. If you're continuously, if the vast majority of the time you, you reach all your goals, then you're actually setting your goals too low. So we want to find that happy medium where your goals stretch you, but that you're not continuously um, feeling let down by yourself for not achieving your goals. If that's the case, then you're setting unrealistic goals and, and, and reevaluate your expectations. So, um, so the third element I wanted to look at was planning. So planning to maximize output. So um, the first thing I want to look at here is to plan your day um, or, or, or even your week. So look, if, if you, some of you may have been planning well while you were at work or while you were working at home before and you had your own space and you didn't have all these other changes happening around you. 
Um, so what I would say is that a lot of us have maybe fallen out of the good habits that we used to do before because our environment has shifted and we're, we're trying to adjust to the new circumstances. So whether you were doing it before or not, what I'd say is, is you know, just start again or start from scratch with planning your day. Now, some people plan their day at the morning of, and what we recommend, and it's really, really important that you do that, is that at the end of each working day, you plan the next working day. So how you do it is you start with a brain dump. You write down everything that you feel you need to do the following day or the next working day. So it's Friday, you might be doing it in this particular weekend on Tuesday because of the bank holiday. Um, but for whatever the next working day is. So you do your brain dump first, then you look at your list and you say, OK, what are my A's here? What are my B's? What are my top priorities? So some of you have heard of Pareto's rule, the 80-20 rule in relation to maybe revenue and customers. So they might say 80% of your revenue or of your profits comes from 20% of your customers. And I can say from coaching for 15 plus years to I suppose hundreds of businesses at this stage, if not more, um, that, that, that that ratio does hold true there or thereabouts. The vast majority of the turnover of your business, the vast majority of the profits of your business will come from a, a, a much smaller proportion of, um, of your actual clients. Now, interestingly, it's the same with our productivity and time. 80% of our results, 80% of the great results that we get comes from 20% of the work we actually do. Okay, so one wonders, what are we doing with the rest of our time? Okay, and I call that stuff or faffing around or busying ourselves doing things that, yeah, they're a bit important, but they're not really all that important. We're avoiding the things we, we should be doing, like maybe picking up the call, that, that, that phone and reaching out to new customers or to prospects or dealing with maybe challenges that are cropping up in the, in the business or within our role. So it's really important when you do that brain dump of all the tasks that you want to do, that you look and see where's the low hanging fruit for me here. If, if I could only work for one hour, what would be the most important things that I got done? And you do those first. Okay, and it might take two hours to do them, whatever it is, but look, you'll know yourself for your, own, for your own circumstances. What are the absolute most important tasks for you to do the following day? They're your A's. Then the next most important ones are your B's. And, and, and you can do C's and D's as well, but you do not move on to C and D tasks until you've your A's and B's done. Now, the other thing in relation to planning your day is I'd set a, a start and a stop time to each task and activity that you plan to do. So remember we said about goals being smart, they need to be time framed. So your plan for the day needs to be time framed. Your goal is that you'll get, let's say your five A tasks done. Well, you need to time frame them. How long will they take? And, and, put, and look, this again, this will be a little bit trial and error. You might get your timings off initially, um, but at, once you do it, stick at it. Once you're doing it for a while, you'll get much, much um, better engaging how long it'll take to do an activity. And um, test, test and measure. So, you know, again, if you, if you plan on doing 10 tasks tomorrow and you only get eight done, don't berate yourself. Just chalk it down as experience and say, okay, I overestimated what I could have what I could have done there, or why did I not get the, the 10 done? Um, were there, was I unrealistic about the level of interruption that I would get from, from family or friends or whatever it is? So just, just I suppose, look at it as an experience and say, what can I learn from this? And do I need to change my goal or do I need to change something about my, my setup? Um, so another thing to focus on is that really it's the direction rather than the pace that's most important now. So the last thing we want is people to be busy doing stuff and going off in, in different directions. It's really important whether you have your own business, whether you're part of a team, um, wh whether you, you've always worked from home or you're new from working at home, from home, um, whatever the situation is, make sure that you're engaged with the other people in your team. Make sure that you're all working towards a common goal, that you know what that goal is and you're all working in the same direction and that you're doing something each day that you're supposed to work, you're doing something that's moving you forward. That's, it, it's the direction is more important than the pace. Some days you'll get more done than others. Um, but if you're going in the right direction, you'll get to where you need to go eventually. And it's just to make sure that everybody on your team, everyone um, that, 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 um, that you're working with is all working in the same, in the same direction.
And so the breaks I had mentioned as well, so just to make sure to have um, to have regular breaks built in from from your posture, whether you're standing or sitting, um, and that, that you walk around. Our our bodies are amazing, fantastic machines, but they need our blood flowing around. They need it delivering oxygen to every single cell in our bodies, and it can't do that if we're stuck in one spot looking looking at a screen. Um, obviously, if you can have your screen at eye level, um, if you can have a, a separate keyboard and mouse that you're not trying to use the keyboard on the laptop if you're working for, from a laptop. And um, some of you will be set up for this, some won't, but make the most of, of whatever you can. My laptop at the moment is on top of a bin, which is on top of a chest of drawers. So, um, okay, it doesn't look particularly pretty, um, but it's very functional and very, um, I suppose, ergonomically, it works well for when I'm doing webinars. Um, so uh, we're all we're all making the most out, out of what we have, and so let's make sure that you leverage as well as much as possible. That you delegate, you use technology, you upskill. We have a fantastic opportunity now. Um, you know, a lot a lot of you are probably a lot more experienced on Zoom and webinars than I am. I, I've been using Zoom for quite a while, but only for meetings, not not for running webinars. And um, my learning curve has gone through the roof in the last couple of weeks. Um, upskilling in relation to it. Um, I just want to, uh, if you can give. Give me a, um, a reaction there if you can, I'm not sure what tabs you have in front of you, but if you move your mouse along the bottom of the screen, then you should be able to, um, you should be able to wave or do a thumbs up. So can I see if you're able to do that, will you do a wave or a thumbs up? Okay, so that might be coming up for Elaine, but it's not coming up on, on, my, on my screen here. Okay, um, that that's fine. So I have a a, um, a lovely comment from Joanne here saying, uh, "Don't laugh." But my thing is to get up in the morning earlier. Um, I have so much to do. I feel like a teenager, late to bed at night, and up late in the morning. <laughs> any, any tips? Okay, so um, uh, so oh, you want to get up earlier in the morning is the is the thing. Okay, so the 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 tips with going to bed too late at night. This, this is what I use my myself, Joanne. So I hope this this might help you. Um, I I don't know if there's kids in the house or not, but but in in my house the younger kids um, go to bed at half eight. So when they go to bed at half eight, I change into my pajamas and I do my face, take off the makeup, put on the night cream, um, and all of that. So that so that when I am going to bed. I'm not too tired to do all of that and going to bed doesn't seem like a chore. And I'm not sure if this makes sense, sense to you or not, but that's how, how my mind has worked on that before. And I find that it's much easier than I just come down, brush my teeth, hop into bed and I'm, and I, and I'm done. Um, so um, also set the time, decide in advance what time you're going to bed. If you're going to bed, for example, now at 12, it doesn't matter what it is, it could be 12, it could be 2, it could be 11. I, I don't know what your, your norm is at the moment, but whatever your norm is at the moment, I would look at pulling it back by maybe just quarter of an hour and do that for three nights. The key to getting up early is always going to bed earlier. Okay, it's, it's, um, it's really difficult to try and tackle it from the getting up earlier point of view. So I know what's worked for me is tackling it from the when I go to bed point of view. So whatever time you're going to bed at now, I just try and roll it back by, by 15 minutes for about three nights. And, and when you've that done, then start looking at maybe another 15 minutes until you reach your, your target time to go to bed. Um, so um, so I and look and look for the blocks, look at what's happening. So another thing that happened to us, sometimes we were having our dinner too late. If I was waiting for my husband to come home from work before we'd have dinner and then dinner would run too late and that would have a knock on effect on everything else. So look at earlier on in the day and see, is there anything having a knock on effect on um, pushing out that bedtime? But I would definitely recommend work at it from the bedtime end rather than from the getting up end. So I hope that helped you with that, um, with that question, Joanne. Um, okay, so um, the next one I want to look at is communication. So look, in Action Coach, we say communication is the response you get. So when we're communicating really well, people carry out the tasks or the process or the whatever it is we want them to do, the behavior we want them to do, they do it the way we want them to do it. And um, way too often, 
we, we, um, we think we've communicated something effectively and then we're frustrated that somebody does something else. Always look at yourself first and say, well, how well did I communicate it? And be honest and realize that if you had communicated it very well, it would be done um, the way you needed it done. Um, but they, these are very different times and there's very different reasons for communicating now. So again, even if you were working from home before, and let's say if you're managing, uh, managing a team and they were or weren't working from home, it, it, it doesn't matter. The levels of communication that were required before are very different to the levels of communication required now. Because I mentioned before, outside interaction and, and engagement has changed for everybody. So to combat aloneness, it is really important that you reach out and that you engage with your team, possibly even your, your, your customers, um, maybe warm leads that, that, that you had, um, suppliers, whoever it is, but there's going to be key people, key stakeholders within your organization or your role that, that you do. And it's really important um, to reach out to people, even just from the human aspect and, and perspective. Um, another one is to reach out to your team to give focus. So somebody may have been very much self-motivated and really knew what they were supposed to do and just got on with their work when they were in the office um, or when they were working from home. But we need to remember again that people's circumstances are very different and that it's very easy for our minds to get carried off and be worrying about things and dramatizing things. And um, so it's really important to be able to give people focus, have daily calls with your team if you have team that are out there. Um, so that to help you keep focused and to help them keep focused. Um, another important reason to communicate is to share wins. You know, there's so much negativity going on around the place. We really need to share what's going well. And there's a huge amount going well. I have some clients now that we re at the moment they're 36% they're, they're up year to date, but they're, the biggest earner in their business has been totally shut down for the last six weeks. And they will more than likely, it looks like they're going to double their business this year alone. Um, so look, there's fantastic wins there to be had. There's some things aren't going well, some things are going well. So we need to really focus on what is going well and do more of that where we can. Um, you want your communications to energize your team, to energize your customers, to energize. You want to have a positive impact. So always look at the end of uh, any communication. So whether it's an email or a phone call, um, you know, how is the person going to feel at the end of the, that communication? Is that going to have a positive impact? Is it going to have a net negative impact? And we should be looking to, to energize and engage people where, where possible. So um, I think we have, I've, I've had another question here someplace. I just need to pop up the menu. Um, what I'd love to ask you to do now, I want to finish off with a little story in a, in a few minutes, but I want to make sure that I get as many of your, your questions answered as possible. So please put your questions into the um, question and answer box. Um, but please also jot in your top learnings and your top tips. We had a huge percentage of people who have been working from home before. So you have a lot more experience than most of us on this call. So please share your top tips. Um, and I'm hoping we're going to have some ergonomic uh, tips coming up there in that as well. Um, so your top learnings, your top tips. So if you're not sure how to do that, just hover your mouse at the bottom of your screen. A black toolbar should come up. And in about the middle of it, there's a little kind of chat box icon with Q&A on it and you can just type in your, your question there. So I have a question from somebody that I'll read out while the rest of you are, are typing in. So it's, I work night shifts um, 12.30 to 8. Fair play to you and hats off to you. Thank you so, so much. You're obviously in the front line. Um, um, well, well done. So whether it's food or medical or whatever it is you provide um, and hats off to your husband as well. We really appreciate everything that you're doing. Um, my husband leaves at 8.15. I then have to homeschool and I also have a, a second job working from home, finding it hard now as, as previously I had time to sleep during the day while the kids were in school yeah, um, for drop off. And when I got home, I could um, spend time on second job. Now I'm finding it very difficult to manage it all. Look, I, 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 I can only imagine and I say, look, hats off to you for doing what you're doing. I think it's back to what I was saying earlier about um, having realistic expectations. Um, so I've, I'm lucky enough to have one of my kids in transition year. So he's actually doing the homeschooling of the younger, the younger two kids. I have another guy in, in junior cert. And to be fair to him, he's kind of man, managing himself. But what I've had to do is look at, I've, I've restructured my, my clients. And unfortunately, I've had a, um, 
well, I, I've moved some clients onto group coaching programs and I have moved some clients onto every two weeks instead of every week. And I've also given them, I've also invited them onto other group programs to complement and, and su supplement the coaching. So what I'm saying to you is that I've had to rejig my working hours and um, because it was unrealistic to expect four boys to manage themselves um, from nine in the morning or eight in, in some mornings until five in the in the evening. It was just totally and utterly real, unrealistic. I, I would normally have obviously teachers and, and sports trainers, child minders, cleaners, a, a whole team of people um, who helped us get through everything that would nor normally get through in the day. Um, so look, it, it, I, I can only imagine um, how difficult it must be for you. You absolutely need your sleep. I know you don't need me to be telling you that, um, but you, you really need your sleep. Look and see what you can do. Can you draw in help? Is there, is there a neighbor? Is there a friend? Is there somebody who can help you with child minding? Um, in relation to the homeschooling, I would say you just do what you can. If that means that, the tea, that they're doing the, the, the TV homeschooling, I know our teachers are great. They're sending loads of homework, but they're also saying, look, if the kids can't do it, don't worry about it. Um, and I'm, I'm choosing the latter than not worry about it. They're doing about an hour every morning. They're doing a bit of math, a bit of English, but they're not necessarily doing what's on the homework, um, what's given as homework. We're doing what we can manage. Um, and, and as I say, I am rejigging my hours so that I can put a bit more time into them. So whatever you can rejig, re rejig, um, where you can pull in help from other people, pull in other help. Um, but also understand, and I've explained this to my own kids, I've said, look, you, there will be lots of people in your class who will have done things that you don't have, have done, um, but there will also be lots of things that you have done that other people in your class won't have done. So look, it, 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 it'll balance out. Um, make sure you're get, getting, getting your sleep. It's, it's not you that you're finding it difficult. It's, that, it's not that you're doing anything wrong. It's that the expectation of everything that you're trying to do that's what's off. So I would say readjust your expectations and get in help wherever you can. Um, I hope that helped with that. Um, another question is, um, do you think it's okay to reach out to existing customers to discuss where they are at? Absolutely. Now look, Rita, it depends on the context of, of, of what you do and all of that. But look, what, what I would say is, is choose the first few customers carefully. So your repeat customers, the people who've given you referrals, the people who know you, that you know that you've been doing business with for a while, reach out to those first and do a test and measure on it. See how, how does it go? Chances are you'll be quite surprised and they'll be delighted to hear from you, but absolutely. And always check in with them. How are they first? How would they are coping? How would their business make the call about them as opposed to about you? Um, and, and I think once you do that, absolutely. Pe people need help and support now. So where you can reach out, please do. Um, another question, um, how to stay positive and get smart goals when your whole industry is reckoning that there will be no business before Easter 2021 at the earliest, financial worries, as well as staff loyalty, morale, et cetera. Um, look, I, I hear you, it is extremely, extremely difficult at the minute and some industries absolutely are getting hit way more than others. Um, so look, there's a huge amount of things that we can't do. And I'm not saying live in airy fairy land and pretend those things aren't there. It's actually the opposite. When I talk about being positive, I actually mean the opposite. I mean being absolutely aware about what you can't do. Be absolutely aware of the constraints that are on you. And then taking those constraints into account, seek out and look for where you can pivot, where you can change, what are the other opportunities? What are the other things, you, the other sources of income, the other skill sets that you have, the other resources that you have? What's going on? The world is going to be a very, very different place um, over the, the, the next 12, to two, 12 months to two years. And we actually don't know yet how things are going to, we won't know for years to come, how things are actually going to fully pan out. So what I would say is do what you can to keep your current business viable and that might mean putting it on ice to some extent until possibly Easter 2021 and then I would start looking at okay who am I what resources do I have what skills do I have what passions do I have what, what am I good at and and start looking at how you can get income income in
Um, I, I, I know it's not necessarily as easy as it sounds, and this may take a period of time. This isn't, oh, I'll stop for five minutes and think what, what I want to do with the rest of my life. It's not like that. This, it'll happen over a period of time. I have plenty of, of businesses that, that I'm working with one-to-one -one that are in the similar situation. I've, I've one in the logistics business, um, and, and they, they focus on um, um, international events. And, and exhibitions, and they're not going to happen until until probably the end of 2021, until there's a, there's a, a vaccine in place. So so look, it is very difficult for a lot of businesses out there. But there's still my point is, with everything that we can't do, there is still a huge amount that we can do. We're just not used to having to pivot so much. We're not used to having to change so much, but we can do it. Human beings are exceedingly resilient and the human race has overcome far greater things than COVID-19. So we will overcome this as well. It just won't happen overnight and we need to have patience and we need to have trust. We need to trust in, trust in ourselves first and foremost that we will, that we will find a way. And there's a top tip from somebody, great fresh air early in the morning, regardless of whether at least 20 minutes first thing is worth two hours later in the day. Now, that's very interesting. I always say an hour of sleep before 12 is worth two after 12. I love that. 20 minutes in the morning is worth two later in the day. And so absolutely go with that. Thanks, Linda. Uh, just, just saw who that was. Lovely to see you there, Linda. Um, next one is from Rosa. And um, you mentioned setting um, times for tasks. Is it advisable to write down the times for each task? Um, completed. Yes, absolutely, because then you have the difference between what you planned and what actually happened, and that will help you to set more realistic expectations going forward. There are often a lot of small things. Yes, there are. So look, what you might do is you might clump some of those together. So you might say, I spent 25 minutes answering emails, or I spent 25 minutes filing the stuff that I'd done in the morning. Um, so yes, any logical ones that you can clump together, do that. Um, I've tried to do it um, but find it takes my focus and concentration away and takes longer to refocus. Okay, so look, it's picking your timing. So Rosa, it might be a case of um, of saying, okay, at 11, I'm going to review what I did for the, for, for the last hour and a half or hour or whatever it is that you have been working. And so I would maybe punctuate your day with times where you stop, but to, don't leave it till the end of the day because you'll have totally forgotten. Um, so again, to, a, a bit of test and measure, a bit, bit, bit of test to measure with that. Um, thank you, thank you very much, Rita. So I just want to finish off with um, a little, a little story from you, uh, for you rather. Um, it's it's about a, a Zen master, um, or it's from from a Zen master. And the story is about uh, this old farmer. He's been working the land for many decades at this stage, and one morning his horse bolts. His one horse bolts. And all the neighbors come around to, to consult him and they say, well, we're really, really sorry. And it's so terrible. It's so tragic to hear that you, your horse bolted. Obviously the farm is his livelihood and that this is absolutely massive. And the old farmer turns around and he goes, well, we, we'll see. The following day, the horse actually returns with three wild horses. And again, all the neighbors and villagers come to him and say, oh my goodness, you're so, so lucky. It's amazing. You, you, you had one horse two days ago, uh, one horse, what, one horse uh, or three horses, no horse yesterday and four horses today. Um, you're so, so lucky. And the farmer says, we'll see. The following day, his son went on, went on one of the wild horses and the horse kicked him and he ended up breaking his leg. And again, the neighbors came around um, consoling him, saying, oh my goodness, that's awful. It's such a tragedy. And now you're down a laborer on the land as well. It's so awful that, that your son broke his leg. And the farmer said, we'll see. And then the following day, the military came to the village and they were looking to, to conscribe um, young um, men in the, in the village, but they passed over the farmer's son because of his broken leg. And all the villagers were saying to him afterwards, oh my goodness, you know, that you were so lucky, isn't it amazing that your son broke his leg and then he wasn't taken off to, to join the army. And the farmer just said, we'll see. So look, the point of the story is we can be very, very busy judging situations and saying this is awful and that's great and this is terrible and that's awful. But you know, we haven't gotten to the end yet. So we have absolutely no idea whether something is good for us or bad for us. For, for some people, for, for many people, I'm convinced this is going to be the best thing that ever happened to them. They're going to have major life changing. Um, our environment has changed, so therefore our, our identity changes. When our identities change, our values change. When our values change, our belief system changes. 
then our skills change and then our actions, behaviours, decisions and eventually results. For any of you who've been to a, a, a workshop of mine before, you might recognise it's the identity iceberg from the bottom up that I just um, set out to you there. But my point being, we're all going through massive change and none of us know where we're actually going to end up in a couple of years time. So we just, all we need to do is is just do our best each and every day. Are we a tiny little bit better than we were yesterday? That's it. That's it. We just do our best each day. We, we look to see that we're going in the right direction and nobody can expect any more of you than you do your best. So look, on that note, I just want to say thank you very, very much to all of you for not only attending, but for all your participation, for your tips, for your, for your learnings. Um, really, really appreciate all your, all your input. And um, I think Elin might want to pop in again to say, to say goodbye to you. But for my part, um, thank you very, very much and goodbye. And hopefully we'll see you again soon. Hi all. I wasn't actually going to pop in, but I am here now. Um, so thank you so much, Helen. That was just fantastic. Um, I actually am going to have to watch it back again myself because I need a hell of a lot of the tips that you, you gave there. I know there's a lot, lot of other questions that came in too, but what we'll do is we'll look at those afterwards and try to get back to you by email or we'll put them up somewhere either on our social media or on our website. Um, so look, I suppose just to, just to sign off, thank you again, Helen, and thank you all for attending. Uh, we have another webinar on Tuesday, and that's going to be from the local enterprise office, Tomás Hayes, and he's going to run through essentially all the funding availability that's out there at present. The existing funding that's been there, the amendments that have been made to that in account for the emergency that we're currently in, and then some, some new initiatives that have come on board. So I'll be putting the information out on that social media this evening, and you'll all get an email about it tomorrow. Um, if you have any questions, it'd be really good if you can send those in as well, because then we can have a few questions for him to have in line and ready to go as and when you, you, you come in on Tuesday to listen to him. And then we actually have another webinar on the following Tuesday. So that's Tuesday week. And that's going to be Sean Taff uh, from the Sean Taff group. And he's going to address all our root issues and cutting issues. <laughs> and uh, so keep posted for that. We'll have more details of that coming um, over the weekend. Um, but look, just leave it at that. Thank you all so much. And keep an eye on the social media and on our website. We have a new website up and we're updating info all the time on there. Um, so I'm going to sign off now. And thanks again, Helen. Very welcome. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks to KPM. Okay. My pleasure. Bye, Bye. everyone. Bye. <laughs>